In the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Individuals who are prepared to stand up for what they believe are to be admired, especially if they do so in the face of hostility. And the figure of God's servant in the book of Isaiah is one such person. And in today's first reading, he's presented as a gentle, resolute figure who trusts and obeys God because he believes that God has called him to defend what is true and right. More than that, he knows that God will sustain him. And St. Paul writes about Jesus' obedience in his letter to the Philippians. Jesus did not only cling to equality with God, but humbled himself to become an obedient human person, even to the point of offering himself as a sacrifice on the cross. And throughout his life and during his death, Jesus trusted that like Isaiah's servant, he trusted his father would sustain him. Jesus remained faithful to God's truth, challenging the worldly standards and values that were contrary to it. And the church, which is his visible presence on earth, is called to do the same and will be similarly persecuted when it does. The story of how Jesus came to be on the cross to offer himself as a sacrifice is told in all four Gospels. And St. Mark's account of the Passion gives us a number of intertwining stories of different people who come together on Calvary where their stories are given a new meaning. Firstly, there is the story of the Pharisees. This lay Jewish movement had defended and observed God's laws through wars and difficult periods. They interpreted those laws and, defend, and defended their interpretation. They had saved Judaism in the past from being wiped out. And so the Pharisees were determined to stave off any threat to their teachings and what they believed to be God's law. Now when the crowds shouted, Hosanna to the son of David on Palm Sunday, their situation was threatened. But when the crowd shouted, Crucify him on Good Friday. They knew that they had staved off another threat. The Pharisees were defending God, but they were not listening to him. Secondly, there is the Roman story. Pilate was a ruthless political ruler whose task was to impose control in one of the most inhospitable places in the Roman Empire, made worse 
because the Jews lived there who refused to acknowledge Roman law and refused to recognize Caesar as their king. Like all shrewd politicians, Pilate tried hard to avoid taking responsibility for Jesus' death by washing his hands of the whole affair. But the reality was that he, and he alone, was the only person who could authorize a crucifixion. So when the crowds shouted, we have no king but Caesar, he knew he had achieved what none of his pre predecessors had managed to achieve, the acknowledgement of Caesar as ruler. Judas has his story, as did Peter. Judas thought that he knew the best way to make Jesus claim his kingdom was to force him into action. To actually back him up against the wall until he had to act. But of course, Judas was naive. He became a pawn in the hands of the authorities. And when he knew that he had failed and could see no hope, he did what many people in that situation do. He took his own life. And Peter perhaps thought that he could somehow rescue Jesus from the courtyard of the high priest. You know, a kind of thing that he would have entertained. But when he was backed into a corner, he crumbled and saved his own skin by denying any association with Jesus. But in contrast to Judas, he stayed with the other disciples and with them experienced the joy and learned the cost of God's forgiveness and discipleship. Now all these stories and the stories of others who played a role in the passion of Jesus come together on the cross. The cross of Christ stands in judgment on them and the world because Jesus on the cross is the visible expression of God's love for his creation and people. For those who cannot or will not recognize God's love shining from the cross, the crucifixion is simply a symbol of brutality and death. But it is the assurance of new life for those who recognize the glory of the love shining forth. This week, as we long walk alongside Jesus on the road to Calvary, we need to open our hearts, our minds, and our souls to God's grace. So that next Sunday will be a celebration, not only of Jesus being raised from the dead, but a celebration of the eternal life that we have with and through him. If you've enjoyed this video, it would help us out greatly if you could like and or subscribe. Thank you.